Hi, welcome to the Mohua Show. My name is Mohua Chinappa and I am an author, entrepreneur and ex-housewife. This podcast is about everything from business to technology to arts to lifestyle but done and spoken imandari se. Hi, in today's episode we have Vandana Anchalia. Vandana is the founder and director of Cow. Cow is Kanan Animal Welfare. Now when I spoke to Vandana she mentioned to me that she believes that animals are equally deserving of quality care and respect and which is so true uh, considering the number of road accidents we see where you know the dog or the cat is just lying totally unattended for days on end she founded cow with an aim of providing quality care to all strays defying the subpar standards of animal care in our country Vandana to begin with first and foremost i would really like you to tell me what is the biggest issues in animal welfare that is happening you know presently i think uh, if you talk about the biggest issues i think it's mostly lack of awareness lack of awareness that you know they deserve the same kind of treatment as we do and this is a bigger problem in india because uh, you know india is already uh, dealing with so many other issues with regards to humans that animal lives does not matter a lot to other people so there is less of government initiative there's less of personal initiative unless you find a crazy animal lover you won't see people being kind to animals in general so i think lack of awareness is the biggest issue right now that animal welfare is facing in our country worldwide you know developing countries they have kind of come up with stricter laws and you can see a lot of change happening in the world but that is not the case with india right now so yeah i would say lack of awareness is the biggest challenge for us so tell me vandana what was that point you know were you always an animal lover right from the t- time you were a child because i remember you know during our nursery uh, rhymes and books there was all always about a dog talking to a cat and a cat talking to a dog and we believed that animals did you know communicate and respond with each other and of course we forgot it over the years um what was that point in your life where you felt that you know this was your calling so i wouldn't deny that i was an animal lover i'm i do not know how one defines an animal lover is but yes being from a jain family you know we were always taught to be non violent to animals we were vegetarians you know by by the fact that i was from a marwari family so we were feeding the dogs outside our house we were kind to animals around us basically never hurt them but uh, if you speak of this whole craziness about starting a non-profit organization and you know pursuing this as my passion was not something that i had identified at that point in time it only happened uh, very recently that was in 2014 when i saw one of my neighbors like beating a dog to almost death oh, and God. you know it kind of uh it just kind of uh, disturbed me to a point that you know being silent about something is fine you don't want to pursue a issue is fine but if your silence results in somebody's death that's just not acceptable and you know it's that was a point when it all started and i even i did not know at that point in 2014 that you know this was going to take a turn in such a serious way wherein you know in like in next two years i i will have yeah i am saying that you know once you start rescuing it's almost like you start seeing animals in distress it just happens to you naturally and i think it started with one but then you know we went on to i went on to personally rescue a lot of animals near my house and then at some point i realized that you know this is not enough because you're you're always seeing suffering and then the whole idea of this creating an organization came so that is how cow came into being uh but yes i was an animal lover i always loved animals from the time i was a child i was a kid i mean so you know it's it's really interesting when you say this because you know i keep thinking about the fact that yes i can't handle suffering of any sort you know if there's a cow who's suffering or a dog suffering or a human being suffering any suffering whatsoever does disturb me but somewhere i don't know if i can really say that i'm out of this whole nexus because i do carry leather i do carry bags and you know there is um, i do carry a lot of products i wear a lot of stuff you know on me which uh, definitely has caused some animal somewhere that's been 
you know, treated very badly. And um, so it's it's such an ecosystem that we live in. Uh, how do you think, you know, as someone who's been advocating towards and working towards such a big cause, and we, we also know that you've had a crowdfunding and, you know, which uh, is amazing for the kind of work you do because very few people can do that. And um, how do you think that one can address this as an issue? So, Mahua, what you're saying is actually a real issue. We do live in an ecosystem wherein, you know, everything that we do ends up in cruelty to animals. And even as an animal lover, rescuer, I'll tell you, I was, you know, you don't consciously think about how you are adding to the cruelty. Till last year, till I did my Mrs. India, I was using products which were being tested on animals. Because, you know, even when you start as a rescuer, you're rescuing lives and you think you're doing a lot. You don't consciously think beyond that because, you know, we are not conditioned like that. We do not grow up thinking that, you know, okay, if I, you know, okay, animals are being tested for us to use a product or, you know, there's leather. I was using leather. I never actually gave it a thought. But when I participated in Mrs. India, because my sole purpose of participating was obviously to bring awareness to this issue and just not women and child and, you know, old age and general topic that people talk about. Because I know this cause is very least spoken about. That's when I realized that even I am not, you know, in a, uh, in a sense, a true animal lover because I'm still kind of contributing to the cruelty. Uh, have I eliminated everything in my life that is leading to cruelty? Maybe not. Because as you said, our ecosystem is such that, you know, even the products that we use at home, even the cleaning products, even small things that we do at home, you know, they or milk for that matter, veganism as a concept for that matter. I'm not a vegan yet. So there are a lot of factors, but uh, if this consciousness has come to me after four or five years of doing this, imagine for a normal person, who goes on about his life or her life, uh, not a huge animal lover. Just imagine how they would even go to that extent and think. But at some point, I think because we are becoming environmentally conscious, these we things have will no come choice, into play. Vandana, we have no choice. We have to become conscious. You know, That's the what world I'm is saying. suffering in such a huge way that we don't have a choice. Nahi hai. We don't have a choice. Yeah. Right. So now I'm telling you that it's no, no longer a case of animal cruelty. It's becoming environmentally unsustainable also. The use yeah, of leather, when we talk, the use you know, about of animal animals, products. Yeah, so Vandana, you know, when we talk about animals, I'm very interested, you know, also because, you know, in India, mosquitoes, we have 7 lakh plus deaths with dengue and malaria and they also right. fall under that category. Yeah, and we have dogs that cause about 35,000 plus deaths on roads, you know, and uh, these are human beings also who die because of a cow that's just been left out on the street and, you know, somebody at night is driving. There is dengue, there is malaria, there are these mosquitoes that are killing you know, human beings. And uh, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just very curious because uh, to understand because uh, is it big, you know, dogs, they're so beautiful because we are, you know, we, we have so much of social media around us where you have uh, these really cute videos of kittens and dogs and, the you know, a, a rabbit. And some people also actually have uh, snakes as pets. Um, and, you know, we tend to feel because we are a society who's uh, all the time we're scrolling down our phones and we find these really pretty videos and people are more uh, maybe becoming softer towards dogs, um, you know, but uh, the rest of the animals really are not taken into consideration, even by the greatest, uh, probably animal, um, you know, organizations that work towards animal welfare. So do you kind of, how do you, you know, how do you address this? So what you're saying is very true. Dogs are the easiest to rescue, easiest to communicate with. Um, and, you know, they are because they are more uh, their relationship with humans is very different from any other animal not that other animals are not affectionate I mean I had a huge misconception about cats till I had two of my own only when you have them you understand their way of being affectionate is completely different from you know how a dog interacts with you but um, yeah there is a bias obviously but it's not that there are not people doing particular kind of 
rescues, but it is really the lack of awareness, infrastructure, resources in India that leads to this bias. Because if you go abroad, you will see rescues for all kind of animals. Farm animals have their own rescues. Cats have their own rescues. Dogs have yeah, their Bandana, own rescues. Yeah, human beings here don't have rescues. So, you know, India is not even a country that we can really compare, you know, with... Uh, the that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. That's the problem. Mm. That's the problem that India is dealing with its, its own issues of human uh, population, uh, humans dying, you know, with this pandemic and... Everything is so, uh, we, you know, we are always around humans that we, we are not even able to solve that. So, you know, I'll just give you a very small example. If a crime happens with an animal, you go to the police station, you try to lodge an FIR, they, they are so overwhelmed with their own human cases that they don't want to take it up. And they ask us for the logic, ki, you know, we can't do it you don't have case take a dog. You understand? So there is, there is a disbalance there, but at some point, you know, we have to understand that it has to go hand in hand because nobody's above uh, someone else. Even animals are living beings. Nobody's above them. So there is bias. But we as a country have a long way to go when it comes to animal rights and welfare. Yeah, I think this is a very, very, you know, it's a very, it's a long drawn uh, conversation because, you know, like I said that for, you know, for most of us, we find these very cute videos of dogs and, uh, you know, and cats and uh, animals that can be kept at home with the human being. And uh, they are uh, maybe, you know, they are on the uh, better part of the food chain, unlike a whole lot of other animals that have the equal amount of probably affection, which is not yet known. And um, yeah, so it's 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 like, you know, for because I, I was just talking to someone and they said the number of deaths that happen on roads, there are stray dogs that are outside, they often, you know, bark and they're, uh, ca you know, they catch people who are coming back late at night who are riding a bike and they, you know, they end up getting bitten by the dogs. And these are all very poor people, you know, who are probably doing a late night shift, you know, from a um, restaurant or from a hospital. And so these are serious issues that happen in India, you know. So obviously animal love is going to be so much in question because there's so many other things that are so large, uh, Vandana. Uh, but so when you talk about, sorry to interrupt you there, when yes. you talk about deaths because of dog, I'll tell you there is in multiples of hundred, the dogs are dying every day because of human cruelty, dogs being run over, you know, yes. dogs not having shelter, dogs not having food. And what you're talking about is just a very small portion of, as I said, you know, we have to uh, come a long way when it comes to animal rights. The dog population certainly needs to go down. It is unsustainable to have millions of dogs on the street. You mm -hmm. have to start a, you know, spay a and sterilization program process. To co co correct. Yeah. To control the population. But as I said, this is not government's priority right now. And there is so much corruption. You you know in our country, even if somebody gets an ABC contract, there's so much corruption within the government who's giving you the contract that it is impossible to reach the target that you want to. At the pace India is doing sterilization, we will never solve this problem. Because by the time you complete 20,000, there are one lakh which are reproduced already. Because a dog is capable of producing yeah, yeah, they have six a to eight. Yes, yeah. yes. So, you know, this is this is unsustainable because of that. So, no, even as an animal lover, I understand that feeding the dog or, you know, just looking after the dog is not going to solve the problem. The problem will only get solved when we start sterilizing and, you know, the population goes down and there is no homeless dogs on the street. Even dogs on the street is not a good thing. It's not good for the dogs. It's not good for the humans. Because they are territorial by nature. And if they see somebody, you know, coming into their territory, they will chase. It's a natural behavior. So tell me, you have sent uh, dogs from India uh, abroad. There have been families who've uh, taken dogs. Yeah. There has been a rule with the government, if I'm not mistaken, because, you know, in India, we still have rabies, unlike uh, the countries abroad. Because, you know, dogs outside, I don't think they have rabies. Am I right? No. So it depends country to country. Uh, we majorly send our dogs to Canada and US. Okay. Uh, countries like Australia and uh, Europe, for that matter, has stricter rules uh, for import or export of dogs. Just yes. for the simple fact that India has rabies. Yes. Recently, US has also put a ban on India. Yes. Uh, yes. To send any sort that. of uh, dogs yeah. who are adoptable 
just for the simple reason the strain of rabies that was not in us has been identified from the dogs that have been coming from abroad but not necessarily from india uh they were taking a lot of dogs from china korea the dogs who been saved from you know meat trade and all of that so we don't exactly know from where the strain of rabies came but still you know it was a blanket ban on all the 131 countries that fall into that category so india unfortunately is a tier 3 country which still has very active cases of rabies us is a tier 2 country and then countries like australia they are tier 1 countries where there is no rabies at all so has we still fall you vandana in uh, you know yeah yeah 100% because all our adoptions were overseas only we we barely had any local adoptions just because of the simple fact that uh, the kind of dogs that we were rescuing were very very critical cases and uh, you know these dogs were not adoptable in india just because some were disfigured or you know some were missing a leg or an eye you know people don't even want to adopt a normal indian dog with everything okay and you know healthy so forget about a dog which has some sort of problem but these stories were reaching i think emotionally they were connecting to a lot of people overseas and they still came forward and i think people overseas because as i as i said it's more of education awareness that they are open to adopting animals like this in india we still have ki you know log kya bolenge main ek pair ka ek pair missing wala kutta leke ghum raha hu so we still have that you know reputation issue that we don't want to adopt indian dogs fantastic so vandana thank you so much for being in today's podcast and uh, you know we before i end i have to tell my listeners that vandana contested for the title of mrs india 2021 in january last year she further went ahead and won the coveted subtitle mrs beyond people's choice at the mrs india pageant i have to tell you about one of my most uh, favorite novel by george orwell animal farm you know which is still taught to school children and remains for many the entry point into the political thought processes that shape the planet it took some talking pigs and horses to achieve that so thank you so much vandana for all the good work that you are doing and i hope many more people come forward listen to this podcast help you out reach out to you and thank you so much for being on today's show thank you mahua to you our dearest listeners you can find us on your favorite streaming services Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcast and of course on all other major streaming services with loads of love we are the mohua show where we talk imandari se